question. I call the member for Fisher. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. It's times of crisis like this that require bold and decisive action. They require leadership. They require the vision to see that solutions which would in ordinary times be unthinkable. But that is exactly what this situation demands. That is what this country needed as the double coronavirus, that double economic and health crisis, began to bite. And it is what the Treasurer and the Prime Minister delivered in April when they announced the single largest stimulus package ever undertaken by the Commonwealth of Australia. The impact of the Morrison government's JobKeeper program all over the country was dramatic and immediate. It's no exaggeration to say that this one bold, then $70 billion decision rescued hundreds of thousands of jobs overnight and kept money coming in for thousands of families who were facing financial ruin. JobKeeper has kept almost a, a million businesses afloat. It has helped pay the wages of some three and a half million people. It's, directed, it's directly touched the lives of perhaps as many as a quarter of all Australians and indirectly underpinned the future for all of us. On the Sunshine Coast, where I, where I live and where my electorate is, we have felt its effects more than many. I've spoken to dozens of businesses, large and small, in Fisher over the past four months, and they've asked me to pass on their thanks to the Treasurer and to the Prime Minister as they've told me their stories. Stories like uh, Scott Armstrong, who owns the Parklands Tavern in Meriden Plains and the brand new Baringa Tavern. Now, when COVID arrived and the pubs and restaurants were closed, it looked like Scott was going to have to let uh, almost all of his staff go. Despite quickly adapting to provide takeaway food, there would simply not have been enough work for them while the tavern's income sunk through the floor. However, with the announcement of JobKeeper, all that changed overnight. Scott was able to contact 101 of his workers and let them know that they would be retained with the federal government's support. Since that day, those workers have maintained their connection with Scott's business, thanks to JobKeeper. And now that, that restrictions have eased, Parklands and Baringa Taverns are back and better than ever before. This story has been replicated in businesses across the Sunshine Coast. Take, for example, Tony Kelly's Rice Boy in Mooloola Bar, one of the coast's most popular restaurants. It's got a huge following. Some would even say it's a cult following. But with a unique space and no bookings, the restaurant found it almost impossible to survive. Tony now has 30 staff on JobKeeper. Another example, Spices Tamarind Retreat, perhaps one of the Sunshine Coast hinterland's best known resorts and a must visit for destination for foodies on the coast. They were able to bring back 25 staff through JobKeeper. The Edge restaurant in Montville was able to reopen once JobKeeper began with 30 employees in the program. Both Ryan Dillon of Spices and Andy Hargraves at The Edge they tell me that they are now seeing important signs of recovery in our community. Companies of every size in Fisher have used JobKeeper to stay afloat and keep employing Sunshine Coast locals, and that's what JobKeeper was designed to do. Our iconic sea life, Mooloola Bar, for example, has more than 50 staff on JobKeeper. At the other end of the scale, John O. Milligan has kept his two community news agencies, Kuana News and Gifts and Batinia News going, helping a handful of locals and supplying Sunshine Coast residents with their newspaper, all thanks to JobKeeper. Likewise, Matt and Sharon at the Moffat Beach Brewing Company were initially forced to stand down most of their modest staff. But with the introduction of JobKeeper, they brought back takeaway business and lunch and put their eligible team members back on. 
JobKeeper even allowed Matt and Sharon to bring back some of their non-eligible staff with the leg up provided by the program elsewhere in the business, helping them to afford the extra wages. For other Sunshine Coast small businesses, it's been the JobKeeper payment which has given them the people, given them the people and resources they needed to offer innovative new pandemic era services to customers. Two of the coast's world-class fishing businesses, Rockliffe Seafood and Walker Seafoods, rely on export markets to support their businesses. They are now doing uh, quite well as a result of the support that they have received through JobKeeper. Nearby Italian restaurant Orgello's only had nine staff eligible for JobKeeper, but that didn't stop owners Simon Best and the famous state of origin uh, Queensland, uh, Queenslander Billy Moore. They were able to take, uh, they were able to offer a takeaway service and get their business open again, but only with the support of the Morrison government's job keeper. I want to thank Simon and Billy, Heidi and Parvo Walker, Helen and Adam Rockcliffe, and all of the other business leaders on the Sunshine Coast who've taken up the job keeper payment and used it not only to keep employing locals, but to innovate and ensure that their business can make a contribution to our ongoing economic recovery. Nationwide, we are beginning to see the impact of that hard work. Since those deeply anxious early months, there have been promising signs. We should all be optimistic that when our economy opens up fully once again, we will be able to rebuild and create a stronger Australia together. Now, Mr Deputy Speaker, today we've heard a couple of speeches from those opposite, and I'm sure the rest of the day will be full of negative talk from those opposite, those opposite who are absolutely driven to talk down the economy. And, you know, it's a real shame. It's a real shame because Australians want uh, their political leaders to come together at is what our darkest times. And, Mr Deputy Speaker, uh, last, last week I did my tour to Fisher, where I rode around my electorate. And uh, on the ride from Peachester to Mullaney is a very steep hill up, up Bald Knob Road. It's a, it's a cracker of a road. It's a very steep road. And uh, I made the mistake of, uh, when I left Peachester Listening Post, uh, getting on the bike, I put a podcast on, and I made the mistake of listening to this podcast of the leader of the opposition talking about uh, the difficulties he was having managing the expectations of his base and trying to appear have this modicum of of being positive. And Mr. Deputy Speaker, Bald Knob Road is so steep, I couldn't stop to hit stop the stop button on that podcast. So for an hour of torture, for an hour of torture, I had to listen to the Leader of the Opposition talk about the troubles that he's having. Australians want positivity, not negativity, the constant carping and talking the economy down that we're seeing from those opposite. They want to see a positive contribution from those opposite, but that's not what they are getting. Deputy Speaker, with the undaunted spirits of those like my business community and, in fact, right throughout the Sunshine Coast, I have got no doubt at all that it will not be long before, uh, after this crisis that uh, the Sunshine Coast and, indeed, this country will be growing and prospering once more. This bill this bill will enable uh, businesses uh, who have struggled so much to be able to stand proudly on their own two feet. We need businesses like those on the Sunshine Coast that I've mentioned today and many thousands of others to take a lead in rebuilding our economy and bringing Australia through to a brighter future on the other side of this COVID crisis. The bill before us gives those businesses and their employees the precious time they need to make this brilliant future a reality, and I commend it to the House. I think, uh